Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how I put together my Apollo IO Chrome extension web scraper from scratch. This web scraper has been a game changer in terms of getting free leads from Apollo. And what's crazy is I really didn't even have to code much at all to get this to work. I mainly use ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot to kind of tweak the code that it gives me in order to come up with this extension to scrape unlimited leads. I'm gonna walk you through my step-by-step -step process of how this scraper works and then I'm gonna show you exactly how I built it from start to finish I built this on a live stream over four hours so I'm gonna try to condense it down to something that's at least a little bit watchable hopefully you can take away some ideas from it so you can build your own web scraper or any kind of coding project also real quick before we get into it if you want to work with me in any kind of AI or automations project make sure to book a free 15-minute call with me down in the description below I love to chat about how AI can help your business grow so you can make more money Money. And with that out of the way, let's get into showing you how this Apollo scraper works. So I'm over on Apollo.io and I've just thrown together a couple lead sheets here. I have this new list here of 97 contacts. And the way this works is basically we're going to want to make a new list inside of Apollo with all the leads that we want to scrape. The reason why we do this is because when we make a list, it enriches all of those leads with that contact information like the email and their name. And another thing that we're going to want to do in order to get this to work is to make sure our table layout here actually is set to include email. So if we click on this default layout here, for instance, you'll notice this is probably the layout that you're going to be presented with when you first load into Apollo. There is no email here. If we go to our test one layout here, which I made, you'll notice we can actually add in the email here from the contact section here to allow us to see our emails inside of our table layout, which is huge because that allows us to scrape the emails directly from the table. So I'm going to include all this information here, click on next, then you're going to want to save it. I already have it saved. And then from here, what we're going to want to do is just click on the extension that I just made. And this will find the lead list, find the total amount of contacts, and then find the total amount of pages that are on this lead sheet. And then from here, we can set the time in between the pages. So first, we don't look like a bot. And second of all, it gives your computer time to load the information for us to scrape. Personally, I like to keep this on anywhere between three and five seconds. I'll leave it on five for this. But once we're on our lead sheet here, all we have to do is click on scrape list and then it will go through it'll actually go to each of the pages scrape all of the information and then put it in one giant table for us to download with this download CSV button. Kind of the way this works is what it does is it first detects if we're on a list URL here. So that's kind of what this is right here. It detects whether or not we're on this finder view ID. And then if we are, it checks the total amount of contacts that are on the page from this number down here. So it gets the exact amount of contacts that are in our lead list. And then once it finds the total amount of contacts, it divides it by how many people show up per page. So for this instance, we have 25 people per page, especially on the free plan. That means there'll be a total of four pages for us to see our contacts. So what it does is it actually makes four different URLs from the total amount of contacts based off of the list URL that we put in here. Then when we click on scrape list, it basically goes to that first initial URL, scrapes the page, goes to the second URL, scrapes the page, and continues that for every URL until it is done. And then once it's done, it takes a little information, puts it in a giant table right here, then we're allowed to name it and then download our CSV file. And I can just save it wherever and then open it up however we want. If I open this up in Excel here, you'll see we get things like the first name, last name, full names, titles, emails, employees, companies, phone, industry keywords, all the good information that we added from our list. And yeah, that's kind of a rundown of how this scraper works. A few things to note though, is that it only goes up to 100 pages. You'll notice on this one, because that's just the total amount of pages that Apollo will let you go through on a lead list, which means you can only have a total of 2,500 contacts in a given list at a time. But with the 10,000 email credits you get per free account. This shouldn't be an issue if you just make multiple accounts. But now that I've shown you how it works, let me go through the full breakdown of how I put this scraper together. While it is built with AI, there will be a little bit of coding that you have to do in order to get it to work. And also I do want to mention by the end of it, I did polish this scraper a lot. So it looks a lot nicer and a lot prettier. So the final result isn't exactly what it looks like, but it's basically the gist of how the scraper works. So with that all out of the way, let's get into building. So in the past, we've been scraping 
Apollo by the T bodies here. So if we go through the code here, I don't know how good you guys can see on the side here. There's basically these T bodies right here that allow us to scrape all the relevant information. But what I didn't realize is that we can just scrape the table directly. And that will give us our information a hell of a lot faster than if we were to just scrape each individual T body. Also, because we can scrape the table, we can also change the table layout. If you guys look at this right now, you can see the emails for these companies right here. The emails are right here. There's no like clicking on anything, like having to, to verify stuff. Now, granted, there's only one email, but like realistically, if you're using email marketing for any way, like you're only going to need one email. We can just scrape the table directly to get this information. So if I go here and I click on scrape, you'll see I have a little scraper that I already kind of built out that gives us the emails in a table here. So let's get into how we're going to build this. Of course, we're going to start off with ChatGPT. Let's start off with this. Say, can you make me a simple Chrome plugin that detects when this URL current or I say is active, I guess. And we're going to want to put this finder URL in here. The reason why we're doing this is because we only want it to scrape lists when we're on this base URL here. So when it finds this, just like print something like active. Um, Don't use content JS, use pop-up JS and make an HTML file. Okay. So don't use content JS, use pop-up JS and make an HTML file that displays the current URL the user is on and tell me if it's the base URL or not. Pop-up HTML and hopefully when we're on a given page, it updates with the page and tells us whether or not our base URL is correct. We're going to head on over to our favorite here, VS code. We're going to follow along with what it wants us to create here. So we need a manifest.json file, a pop-up HTML, and a pop-up JS. So now we have our three different scripts here that we will use for our plugin. Let's kind of go through this to make sure it does what it says it does. So we're gonna change this from URL display to just follow easy scrape. We're gonna get rid of the icons for now. I'll probably add some in later by the time you guys get this, but we will get rid of all of that good stuff. And it looks like we're gonna change this title here to Apollo easy scrape. Query, active true current window, tabs, get the URL. Let's just check this out. Okay, so we have our little Chrome extension here. We don't need much to get this to work. And we can then head over to our Chrome extensions page just up here through Chrome. I'm on Brave right now, but this will also work for Chrome. Load unpacked. We're gonna find our extension folder that has our files we just made. So I have this folder here that I will select and that'll pop up right in there. And now if we head over to here and we can kind of go through all of my nonsense extensions I have, we have this. So now it says current URL. This is not the base URL. Perfect. So if I were to go over to like Apollo, for instance, so log in and I check this out again, current Apollo, this is not the base URL. So we're looking for when it's on this this is the base URL. Perfect. So now we have it detecting when this is the correct URL. So let's go ahead to chat GPT. And now we're going to get rolling with this. Can you display a button? And when it is not the URL, make it gray. And when it is, make it clickable and blue. So this will give us a very clear indicator of when we're able to scrape the page or not. We're going to start with the button first, and then we're going to kind of go through everything here. So we're going to start with one page to scrape. So we're going to get kind of the foundations of this, and then I'm going to build out, and then we're going to transfer it over to the multi-page scrape. Um, so yeah, we'll change our styles like that. And it gives us a new pop-up JS to also tell change the button, which we're also going to need. So I'll slap that in there. And then we can just head on over to our extensions. And then if we refresh our extension and we come over to here, base URL detected. Now, why is that not changing? Oh, because it's not, oh, the base URL, but then that's so strange. Why is this not working all right already? Come on now. Didn't really look at the code. I'm just gonna hopefully this hope to God this works. So you use a different method to make it blue if it's on the sub URL. There we go. Look at that. Okay. So now when we're on our lists, we're on this, but if we go to something else, we are not on that. Beautiful. So now we have just like a little check to make sure that everything is great. And what we can even do is add some border radius of like 10 pixels, which will just pretty up our button a little bit to make it round. Well, round. Look at that. Isn't that cute? All right. So we're going to say, can you make it so when the button is clicked, it displays the table on the page 
in a table view in HTML. Find the only table on the page and style it to show everything. So hopefully what this will do is it'll take the table that we found from here and then it will display it like the other plugin I had down here. And that will make kind of a table that we can then use to hopefully give us a button at the very end to download everything on that page. And then all we have to do is make sure that we are iterating on the pages to get all the data correct. Right. So it tells us to add in some new functions. We have our new manifest file here. So we'll just say this, rewrite the entire HTML and JavaScript with the changes. In the meantime, we'll take this new JS or manifest file, stick that in there. And the difference between this is, is now we have some permissions. So now it allows us to script on the tab, which is key. Also background JS, we're not gonna actually, I think use this, but I'm just gonna make a file anyway, in case we do. And then um, the default icons, we will just delete for now as well. And then we also have some content scripts in here, which I don't think we're using content scripts right okay let's just take their new script and give it a whack that's our new stuff right there okay so once again come in here ah uh, okay so it wants us to use a content js we'll just we'll just kind of delete that edit this in the content to not use a content.js or not edit the code and not use a content.js huh oh okay so that was for the content scripts that's what that is so if i were just to just like you, if we do this, hey, look at that. Look at that. Isn't that cool? There we go. So now if we check out our new script here, if we go to our extensions tab, check this out, it's not there. If we go here, check this out, it is here. We can click on it and now we have our information. Beautiful, beautiful. We have a lot of goodies here that we need to go through. We're gonna wanna be able to remove any images from the table, just like other kinds of nonsense. Like what's in here? Like checkboxes, remove any buttons, checkboxes and images so let's do that so let's take this script for pop-up and then we're gonna say say when you just when you display the table remove any svgs images buttons and checkboxes and hopefully what that will do is once again remove the goods so we can have a clean version of this we're already off to a pretty decent start but if we get rid of these like icons here then we'll be on a roll and what we'll do too is so we can also remove the quick actions so any column that contains quick actions we'll delete for names we can split that up and we're gonna skip I think we'll do the company URLs, but we might have to skip on the LinkedIn's. So we have our new function here. It assumes there's one table, removes the elements, sick. So there we go, not this, we need this. We don't, we need this. So refresh, come to you. Let's give this also a refresh. There we go, look at that. So now we have our names with the URLs inside of them, which is nice. So if I were to click on this, maybe not. Are the URLs, what are these URLs? Oh, it's it's the accounts URL. That's interesting. So this is the account for the Apollo link. Like if I went here, yeah, this here is the same as this one here, but it's like through the extension. So now we paste it in our pop-up code and then say, add a button that allows us to download the information from the table into a CSV. And then we'll be able to take that CSV and open it in Excel to give us the goods. And we're already like almost halfway there. And the thing that I like about this method too is because you can change the table layout to however you want, right? So like the reason why this works is because we have the emails displayed here, which makes it so much easier to view information. I can't believe I didn't know that ahead of time. Okay, so we have our new button, which we can add here to above this. Rewrite the entire pop of JS with the changes. I don't really want to go through and figure out what I have to do here. Some things are just meant for the AI. And this is one of them. Right. Okay. Sick. You know the rules, guys. Let's give it the old spin. And nothing happens. Let's just say the display table button did not work. Can you fix this? The table CSV and the download CSV. Okay, let's just do this. Let's change the style to display none to just display it always. Let's make it, I don't know, aqua, sick. There we go, so now we have our button here to download this. So I'm gonna take our code here and then say, so can you edit my Chrome extension so that after I get the table data and I click on the download button, it copies the, the exact data to a CSV. So now we're trying to get table data once again into a CSV. I don't know why the first couple codes did not work. I don't mind this actually. I don't mind it actually putting it in like, um, like in the script tag. I think that's fine. 
Oh wait, no, this is just the entire other part of the code. So this is a pop-up JS key, put all this in one pop-up JS file. So what it's trying to do here is make a script tag under here. It's trying to make like a script, you know, what would be like a script, you know, the whole, yeah, like that. But we're just gonna not do that and um, have it try to update this. We don't want that to be in one file. We wanna keep it separate just to make things a little bit cleaner. After we're able to get this CSV file, I will want to do a couple more things for cleanup. I wanna be able to split the names, get rid of the rows that are empty. So like, for instance, if we take a look at this now, if the names don't have the full name, like some of them only have, oh, I guess they only have one letter here. Okay, that'll be fine. But maybe we can split them to be uh, two different names like a first name last name full name we could probably edit the phone numbers to make them also regular expressions so they always are the same thing we have to note though is we have to wait for the table to really load before we can grab the information or else you saw it was gonna be na there now we have our table here open this bad boy up what are we looking at oh okay i came across this issue last time so we only have three or four different titles here which is brutal we want more than this this is terrible we want more information so there's an issue when we display our table here and the employee hashtag actually messes up the way it gets put into the row. Okay, so we're gonna say, I think the, the hashtag from the employee section messes up when you download it, can you handle it? Or can you change it to handle special characters? Because I think it's that hashtag that's actually messing up the way it's downloading the information. Hopefully they'll just give us a new function that we can use to, um, to get the right stuff. So I spent the better part of about, I don't know, a half an hour trying to figure out how to get this to work. And um, it basically came down to me making sure the phrasing on the prompt I was giving inside ChatGPT actually did what I wanted it to do. And yeah, so it took me about 45 minutes to get this fixed, but once I got it fixed, I am like so stuck on what this is. I fixed it before, but like, okay, maybe that will do something. If this works, I'm actually gonna just throw a tantrum. Oh my God. <clears throat> wow. I'm gonna fight someone. I'm gonna fight someone. I literally knew what the issue was. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> brutal. Well, we got it guys. All the information is here. That's crazy. All right, we'll do this. We're gonna take some information here. I'm gonna say this. Okay, so we're gonna say, can you format the phone number so they're all in regular expressions? And then can you correct it, correct any weird characters in the data? So a similar thing kind of happened again. I think I spent about another 45 minutes trying to clean up the data set. Um, basically, long story short, I got rid of all of the special characters inside of the industries and the company names, then also fixed the phone numbers so they look pretty nice, and then got rid of all of the empty fields like NA and no email. What I basically kind of did is just put in the code over and over again, and then asked ChatGPT to remove those special characters and the specific cells that contain information that I wanted to remove, and then generate the final file with everything at the end. And I also told it to split the name column into two separate columns, one for the first name, and then whenever there's a space, split that into another column for the last name, and then also keep the full name column. All right, after many attempts later, this is the one page money shot. Boom, there we go. Countries are all good. States, cities, keywords, industries, companies, the phone numbers are gone if they don't exist. Company sizes, emails, titles, full names, last name, and first name, all formatted correctly with all of the correct information. Beautiful. Okay, so now, so I'm gonna kind of cheat here, but I want it to display this A tag that contains the text total 122. That'll allow us to get our number here to determine how many total pages there are on this list. So if there's a list with like 10 pages, we can figure that out by the total amount of lists here. So we're gonna do by, by 25 here. We want this. So this basically, this code that I have here, finds the document A anchor, which if we go here is this, a text here finds an A anchor with total with text total and it trims it and it puts it on the table to display as found total so we're gonna copy this I'm gonna come over to here make a new one and then we're gonna say so I'm gonna paste in the element from the HTML on Apollo and then just say find this element and return the text inside of it so on document load new one here and that will now tell us if the URL includes also return the number. If I clear that, give it a refresh. Sick, well that worked. So now when we go to our correct page here, we have this. Oh, you know what we can do? Okay, so now we're gonna say in this code, you can calculate the amount of pages there are by dividing by 25. 
and then display that next to the total. Total pages. A little U and yay, look at that. And then we have the total and the pages. I want this to display now every possible URL in this list. How this is gonna work is we have now our 122 pages or 122 contacts makes five pages. And if we kind of look at the links here, we'll notice when we go to another page, it adds a parameter here, page equals two. So we can basically have it filter these links to go to each of the pages. And if I like go back to one, you'll see it goes back to one. Or if I go all the way to five, it goes to five. We're gonna want this to go all the way up for each of the pages. We're gonna have it on the click, go to the first page, scrape, second, third, fourth, fifth, scrape all those pages, put it in one giant table. And you click the button, it downloads that for everyone on the table. I'm gonna put this in here and I'm gonna put this in here. Based on the page count, which is a current URL, which looks like this, which we can then give them the generic list URL and the page URL has parameters like this at the end. Go to the second page and then make a URL for each page and display it under the pages. So hopefully we'll take the page number and then divide that up into all the pages and display the URL of the pages. Generate URLs for each page based on the item pages. Okay, so this hopefully should get the links for us. I was kind of looking it over when it was doing it. There we go. So now we have all of our links set up. This is huge. So now if I take these, I'm gonna make a new one called links. Oh, but see the issue with this is, so, oh, here we go. We're gonna change this up. So make it remove any current page parameters if it exists. So right now it's giving two page parameters. So if I were to go to this link, this this page five link, it would take me to page two. Or pff, it would just say invalid, like not even, not even legit. URL API, what the fuck? No wrong just there's better ways of doing this i don't know how to code but i know that for a fact so now we have can you edit this so it removes any parameters for pages before it makes the new page urls so i don't get urls like this meme zone how many years of coding experience do you have i have maybe eight months <laughs> I would say total coding experience, maybe like three or four years, but like, I wouldn't really call that coding experience. I would say maybe more so like, I got through 45 minutes of free code camp and then called it a day. And then I really started to pick up learning how to code with ChatGPT specifically, maybe May of last year. And like, I, I don't really know, how, I don't really consider myself to know how to code either. Okay, so we're gonna say, can you edit this code so it checks the page URL for any current page parameters or removes them before it makes the new link? Okay, this looks promising. Yeah, we'll go with that. Refresh the thing here. Go to you. Basically spent another couple minutes playing with the prompt, trying to get it to spit out the correct URLs. Because that gave us this. So now we have these five URLs we can go through. If we kind of sift through these in here, they are the same yet different. And if we click on one, it takes us to the page. Look at that. What we want to happen is basically this. We want it to go through all of the pages in this list for like five seconds. So we're gonna want it to update the URL, go to the page, find all the information here, and then put it in our Excel sheet like this. Okay, we're gonna have it do the exact same thing, but make it shorter. Just wanna get rid of some of the unnecessary things, like, um, like yeah, we could have it do the, at, like, the styles for the buttons all in one tab, which, which will just save us some room here. So we could probably get this down to like 150 lines. Spits another good 10, 15 minutes just cleaning up the code. Okay, we're just gonna try it. We're gonna say, can you make it? Basically have it go to each of the URLs, grab the table on the URL, and then put that in one big table. And on our find tables function here, we need to return the information from find tables. That's fine. So our find tables and data just has to return this at the end, which is perfect. And then we need to add this function in here. In theory, get everything for us for each of the tables. So it goes here, waits, by, waits five seconds, grabs the information, display table button, say display all. So we have our links. Okay, huh. did it work? Did it work? No. Once again, another like 15 minutes of me troubleshooting here.
Based on your instructions, we will do whatever you say. I've integrated the changes to aggregate all the scraped data into one big list before displaying and downloading into the CSV file. Here is your revised version of your Chrome script. Thank you, ChatGPT. Just do your thing and don't break. Watch this break. I'm, I'm going to cry. Okay. Here the script is running. Bro, no way. It fucked up the format, but at least it got the correct part. If we delete these duplicate rows with the name and stuff, that's it. That is everyone in this list okay can we edit it so the headers only appear once at the top so there's a couple things to note about this we have to change we have to edit the thing so it does the the, the breaking up the names again which we can just paste the other code that we have in and slap it in there and then we also need to check to see if there's um no email which in case there is no email then leave it blank and then also delete this quick actions now i'm editing this so it only adds the headers in one time amazing Okay, so now this is the correct CSV file. We just need to do one last thing. Okay, so now, so this is my old code. Can you make the new function also make those columns and remove the quick actions column? Once again, you know the deal. I spent about another 30 minutes just trying to get the code to do what it did before again, where it splits up the names, fixes the special characters, and then also removes the quick actions column and then replaces any data fields that should be empty with just empty strings. This was just a lot of trial and error and just pasting the code back in and saying, make it do what it did before, kind of. And I eventually got it to work. But once again, this is just kind of trial and error and kind of see what's working and then what's not working and then stitch together in the very end until it all just works. It's kind of hacky, but for someone who really doesn't know how to code, it honestly wasn't that hard to build. Honestly, I probably could have got it done faster if I would have just had better prompts and actually knew what I was trying to do when I was making the code changes. Wait for it to finish its thing. And then once it's done, it'll pop up a CSV file like this. And then this button will be able to download and we can just do this. So now if we look at this, there we go. Beautiful, 30, 236, which is the 235 contacts list right there. So now if we head over to like this one, for instance, and we only four pages, let's destroy this. We've got our goods, not a lot of emails, in this one also not a lot of employees in this one either we have our data first name last name full name title emails all the goods and an attempt at formatting phone numbers in this live stream i spent another couple minutes kind of prettying up the code and making sure it works i know it's not really much of like a hands-on coding tutorial but it really is the gist of how i build all my projects nowadays you can just type in what you want and if you know how to structure the prompt to get the code to do what you want you can theoretically build anything i learned a lot about making Chrome plugins through this process. And I definitely want to go about web scraping through Chrome plugins in the future, as it's just a lot easier to work with than like things like Appify or Puppeteer or Python. I would say my biggest piece of advice to build any kind of plugin, especially like the Apollo one I just made, is to get an idea of how it works in your head and then kind of break it up into steps and then use those steps to prompt chat GPT with what you want the features to do. Like how I went from, you know, going from the page to then getting the pager links to then scraping all the, the stuff on all of the pages and then putting that all in one table and then getting that table to print out into a CSV file. If you break it down like that, you can make it a lot more manageable and a lot easier to get this done than if you were to just say, make me an Apollo scraper chat GPT prompt. Like it doesn't work like that, right? So just some ideas and some conclusions from me building the scraper. And that's going to be the full tutorial on building this Apollo web scraper. If you guys liked it, make sure to drop a fat like down below. This was a bit of a journey to put together to say the least on stream there was a lot of things i had to go through in order to get it to work but i'm happy with where it is now if you want to get this scraper make sure to download it in the link in the description below it's basically just the raw elements of a google chrome extension that you can install on your local machine and while you're down there make sure to leave a like and comment what you thought and what kind of things should i scrape or automate next also if you want to work with me in any kind of ai automations project make sure to book a free 15 minute call with me down in the description below i'd love to help you on whatever kind of AI project you're building. So that's going to do it for me in this one. I'll see you guys in the next video.